Welcome to episode 111 of our Veeam Industry Insights. Jason, great to be with you again. We've got some extremely exciting news from our perspective. We think everyone's going to be very interested in learning more about. This is an exciting day, right? So it was, I think, just two hours ago that the press release actually hit the wire and the web pages went live and the first blog and there's a lot of details behind the scenes, but we are so excited to share with folks um, the debut of the Data Protection Trends Report for 2023. Uh, Dave, th this is our largest version yet and uh, and for all the right reasons. Yeah, and I'm happy to say three years in a row, we've been able to say this is the largest of not only this report, but the largest ever in the history of the space. So what we like to always impress upon people is, if you're not familiar with this research, it is not Veeam sponsored. It is not just Veeam customers. It's an independent analyst firm asking the questions. Jason, we like to think that it's very representative of the overall industry and now with more data points than any other research instrument and backup and recovery that we're aware of. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring up the slides for this because uh, uh, we did a couple things different this year. So uh, 4,200 responses. That is insane. Over 4,000 responses. Uh, you know, last year we bragged about the 3,400 that were there. And, but we did a couple things different this year that we're really excited about. The, the most notable one being that we added um, organizations under 1,000 employees. So in the past, the Data Protection Trends Report has been historically enterprise-centric, so 1,000 users and up. Uh, but this year, as you can see on that right-hand side, we added several hundred uh, small, mid-size uh, organizations as well to understand, do these macro trends – do they change based on the size of the organization? Um, also, Dave, it's worth pointing out, there's no research that needs 4,000 people to agree, right? The reason right. we do this is because we cover 28 countries and it lets us do a lot of cuts, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. We can not only break it down by overall theater, meaning Asia Pacific Japan or Americas, but we can also break it down in some cases by major country. To your point around uh, company size, we can break it down by number of employees, small, medium, large, or enterprise. We can break it down in some cases by industry verticals. Healthcare we'll be talking about in a few weeks down the road in particular is but one example. So to your point, you don't need 4,000 plus data points to observe a trend. In fact, most analyst firms when they do research, it's in the 300, typically not even close to 400 data points. So that's really what led us at Veeam now over the last several years to create our own research so that we can get even more granularity. We use it, frankly, to inform our decision making about what products and features to bring to market. But we also like to share this externally as a bit of sharing back to the community. And we always like to say, Jason, you owe it to yourself to get informed. Again, this isn't a Veeam commercial. These aren't Veeam customers. This is what we believe is representative of the overall industry and at unprecedented numbers. Yeah, uh, can't emphasize enough. The way that we do this is we come up with a list of question topics um, to be had, but then we go out to an outside independent research firm I guess statistically, you know, some 10, 12, 14 percent, whatever our market share is of that 4,200 are Veeamers. And then the rest of them use Dell and Commvault and Veritas and Cohesity and Commvault, uh, you know, along that way. In fact, you know, speaking of the competitors, I think it is interesting. I, I was looking at one of the last quarterly reports on the number of uh, organizations that some folks have as their entire install base. This unbiased research actually surveyed more unbiased IT leaders than some of our competitors have in their entire customer install base. And I that does make me kind of giggle a little bit. Yeah, to put a finer point on that, we asked more people around the world what their observations were around data protection than some other backup providers have in an install base, despite being in market close to a decade. Yeah. So uh, look, there's a lot of trends that we can we can beat up on folks, but I, I want to get into the data a little bit. Um, you can see here the the major trends. If you haven't done it yet, um, grab the QR code. Um, also, uh, if you're writing anything down or blogging on your own, it's vee.am slash 
DPR, Data Protection Trends Report, the T is silent, I guess, uh, 23 uh, from that perspective. We're going to cover this over, I think it's 11 weeks. We're going to dig into different parts of this research and, and talk through it. But Dave, one of the data points that I think we're probably most proud of in that it really does show where is the industry heading, right? So Veeam, we're a backup company, right? So we got to find out what is it that needs to be backed up um, along that way. Now, this chart, you've seen it before from Veeam because we think it is so informative along the way. There's uh, uh, what we do every year is, uh, this actually covers now four years running. For the last four years, we've asked what percentage of your production servers are physical in the data center? What percentage are virtual machines within the data center? What percentage of your workloads are cloud hosted? Right. And so every year we ask, what is it overall? And then we also ask, what do you think it's going to be two years out? So that's why you see the four shades of green. That's what was actually answered. And then in 22, they answered also about 24. And this year in 23, they also answered about what's in 25. But let's take a look first at what the status quo is. And then we'll come back to the macro trends. Dave, you know, we've always been known as the VM company, and yet take a look at how the market share is laying out as far as what production infrastructure looks like in 2023. Yeah, I like this data point here a lot, Jason, because it, it myth busts in a few different directions, meaning right and left. And to the left, it myth busts the fact that there is no more physical servers in the data center. In fact, yep. historically, uh, we've had the belief that everything virtualized, well, there's actually a lot of physical for many of us still in the data center. And certain geographies vary, certain verticals vary, but overall, physical very much alive and well. So that's why protecting, especially physical Windows, physical Linux becomes highly important. That's not going away. In fact, the data center isn't going away. That's one of the other myth busts. But if we shift over to the right-hand side, cloud is a reality. Cloud, of course, means many different things, and we'll unpack that. And we have unpacked that in prior research, our cloud protection trends research in particular. But what this really says, Jason, is more and more organizations are running a highly varied environment. They're split roughly equally between on-premises and the cloud. Yep. And when they're on-premises, they're physical and virtual. And to your point, now coming full circle, V may have started in the middle, meaning initially virtual machines. We expanded into physical machines. The last arguably four years, we've been aggressively moving into cloud, whether that's software as a service, infrastructure as a service, or protecting platform as a service, such as, let's say, uh, SQL running in Azure, it's just but one sure. example. So this says to me, Jason, the vast majority of us, when we're thinking about our data center workloads, they are both diverse horizontally and then vertically in terms of where do they run? They run on-prem in the cloud, and they may fluctuate between those as well. Absolutely. So let's kind of take a step back. And so we've seen what the status quo is. This is 2023 real. Let's step back and look at the real versus the anticipated and what the shifts are. And the first thing you're going to notice is that um, that drop that happened in 2020 versus 2021, the 2020 data was pre-COVID. 2021 and beyond, obviously, post-COVID. And so certainly, and we've talked about this uh, as it manifested for the last couple of years, look, you couldn't get physical kit um, yeah. in that first year, right? And that meant you couldn't get hosts. That meant you couldn't get physical servers. And so, yeah, there was a rapid acceleration in a one-year time. Satya Nadella from Microsoft talks a lot about how much innovation happened that first year out of necessity, and of course, we've been watching the macro trend since then around as you modernize production, you got to modernize the protection that goes along with that. But Dave, it's kind of heartening to see 12,000 organizations represented over a four-year data collection run rate. And yet, barring the hockey stick that happened with COVID, this, the, the shape of the data is remarkably pure. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, even though it looks like there's differences in the height of those bars, there are, but we've essentially had to zoom in because the scale's so tight. Meaning, if you look at physical, where we're at today, 28%, two years from now, 26%, that's only a 2% difference. Right. If you look in the middle, only a 1% difference between today and projected two years out. Only 3% different if we look at the over on the cloud hosted. So, 
the differences are minute. We're having an amazing amount of consistency in terms of what we have experienced recently, and not just in the one prior year, but a couple prior years, compared to what we think we're going to experience or what we anticipate to be the case a few years out. To me, that says this is the new normal. The new normal yep. is very hybrid. The new normal is multivaried in terms of workloads, meaning physical and virtual. So the reality is, and the reason why we'll uncover in future episodes that data protection is challenging is because not a lot of things got decommissioned. We're still running the things that we have been running while simultaneously expanding into new delivery models, new platforms, and as a service. Yeah, in fact, one of the things I, that I know we've talked a lot about as we started to really get in the data a couple weeks ago to see what, how this was going to come about, notice how there is a little bit of an uplift in the data center. It's not just a decline when we look at the present mode for um, for 2023. And, you know, one of the things we talked to a lot of customers about last year anecdotally was as much as they'd love to jump into cloud um, overall, some of their platforms were so legacy Hmm. that they've had to double down on make one last round of significant hardware investments on-prem just to get their workloads to the point that they can then refactor, modernize, et cetera, before they continue their journey to the cloud. It's it's that one more pit stop on the highway before they uh, before they accelerate um, into the next gear along the way. So, But again, uh, and the other thing, so look, so 27 went to 28 this year on physical. On virtual, you see about, a, what is it, I guess a half point because the number didn't change, but the size of the bar did. So I guess we're seeing somewhere in less than a half a point of variation there. And then that net result comes down uh, an extra two points. I do think it's interesting though, that um, that last year folks thought they were at 49 going to 52. This year they're at 47, they think they're going to 50. So there's still that aspiration that they're on the precipice of more than half of all workloads will be running on-prem. And I think Dave, the way you said it was, was uh, perfect. And that is, we are uh, embracing cloud first and we are standing up new workloads in the cloud faster than we are decommissioning what is on-prem, the net result being a dilution of those on-prem investments while still being absolutely uh, relied upon by the business. Yeah, and I think there's a couple of reasons for that, You know, not to sound pessimistic as we begin a brand new year, but unfortunately the reality is and IDC a Gartner projects out through the rest of this remaining 2023, the supply chain constraints are going to continue to be a real issue. So even if you have the funds, even if you want to go and rack and stack within your own owned data centers, meaning you want to be in the real estate business, you may not be able to get all the kit. One of the major suppliers is quoting about a year for servers in mass and over a year for networking switches in mass. So Jason, that makes planning very difficult. If you know your business is evolving, you almost have no choice but to start embracing the cloud further. Yeah. And again, as we said before, when you modernize production, you got to modernize protection. And as you start our session, Dave, I love what you said about, you know, a lot of this research, the reason we use unbiased uh, research panels and not just go ask our customers for stuff is because it's important for us to understand what do we need to be building? Yes. You know, where do our priorities as far as our investments go? And we have been tracking along this lines. We've had products in all three categories longer than this along the way. So certainly that is shaping that along. Uh, in fact, uh, what do you think? A third of the survey questions never even see daylight. They are yeah. purely to help us understand where does the market need to go to make sure Veeam stays ahead of where customers and partners are thinking about along the way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a way to get informed. You know, we do a lot of listening at Veeam, meaning our Veeam forms. We're monitored by our product management. We certainly have a lot of now returned face-to-face -face engagement as well as yep. virtual engagement such as this. But there's another way to go and capture information, which is a survey like this, which is completely agnostic to the vendor asking the questions. And this slide is a great representation of why might you do that? Well, so you, that you can see year over year trends and not just be biased by recency or biased by a small number of respondents. Again, 12,000 data points, four year period, collected over 28 different countries, many different verticals, many different company sizes. The interesting thing though, one of the punchlines, Jason, is by and large, there is not enormous variation in your data protection concerns 
regardless of what industry you're in, how big or small your company may be, and where you may be geolocated or if you're multinational. A lot of commonality, a lot of us experiencing very similar things. Some of the adoption rates we'll see are a little bit different, but not radically different by any stretch. Yeah, we, you know, with the with a as generous a pie as four thousand two hundred is, we can cut it by verticals, and we see that some verticals like cloud or, or something like healthcare are a little bit more pro cloud, right? Um, we've seen that in certain geos, there's a few points of variation between uh, cloud being an example in uh, say North America versus some parts of Asia or Latam where they don't have as good of access for bandwidth um, to a slight degree. So I mean, there's there's a few pivots. Honestly, the biggest pivot we saw was when you actually cut it by um, by which backup technologies they're currently using. Because you know, if you're a, if you're a Veeam customer, you're probably perhaps slightly more virtualized than most because you're having great success with virtualization. If you're using one of the legacy um, uh, data protection solutions, it's probably because you have a higher investment in legacy architecture within the data center. Uh, and so then there's more of a lean towards maybe skipping vert and jumping towards cloud because you're already behind the eight ball, maybe try to skip a step and catch up. I mean, so honestly, that's kind of the only real pivot. Other than that, this data kind of holds true along the way, which again, gives us a nice balance between the 12,000 data points here, the 4,000 in this year's survey alone, uh, the, versus the 400,000 customers that, uh, that Veeam gets to talk to regularly through our own internal forums to kind of balance that out. So Dave, how about we change one more data point out and kind of give folks a tease on what else we're going to be seeing for, for this week. So we've looked at, um, at the trend towards hybrid. And as we kind of intimated a little bit, if you're using a legacy data protection solution um, because you have an investment in some of the legacy platforms that you see here, as the workloads organically shift into being cloud hosted, legacy backup methods may not hold up. It's no different than 15 years ago um, when virtualization was the disruptive platform of choice. If you just put agents inside of every VM or you just tried to snap what was the storage that was underneath, you probably did not have good luck. You probably did not have good confidence in that your backup solution is working. And when we looked at the, the question was, well, the summary is, do you have a reality gap? But there's actually two questions. The first question was um, 4,000 organizations, they self-identify, they answer the question, my organization has a gap between how fast I can recover applications versus how fast do I need them to be resumed so that the, that the organization continue to do business. And what you see here is, is that 40 plus 42, so 82% of organizations agree or strongly agree that they have that gap, that when something goes down, it's going to be down longer than the business process can tolerate. I think that one's interesting, but to me, this one's even more fun. This is, my organization has a gap between how frequently I protect and how much data I can afford to lose. Because you go to a business leader and say, how much data can you lose? And they say, oh, a couple <laughs> hours, I could, I could power through, right? And then you ask the IT team and they say, we back up twice a week. You got a gap, right? It is amazing to me how, how, how considerable these gaps are, Dave. Yeah, what I always like to point out is, because sometimes we get asked the question, do we believe these are the exact numbers? And I like to politely say it doesn't matter because this is perception, but this is perception of the IT teams that are directly charged with providing these capabilities. So to put a finer point on it, the top line is really about speed. Can you get the data back fast enough? 82% are saying no that they can't. And these are coming from the people charged with the mission of doing that task. And then on the bottom, same notion, but this time looking at tolerable data loss, I would have gone so far as to say, if you ask the business, how much data are you willing to lose? The answer is zero. Well, we may not have a system that's architected to be able to achieve that. And in fact, if our data system says, you know, we can really have a couple hours of data loss, we're not even confident we can hit that. So this is self-reported by the IT practitioners that they believe that they have a problem with speed and acceptable data loss. This is why we like to do this research, because if this is the backdrop, the environment, 
that most organizations find themselves in, then let's look closer at the particulars. But to me, Jason, this right here is a powerful statement because it says the majority, vast majority of organizations globally, no matter their size, no matter what kind of business they're in, their teams self-identify that they are not likely to meet their service level objectives. Yeah, let's go to, let's double down on SLA, right? Service level agreement. This is the agreement between the business as far as what I need and IT, what I'm capable of delivering. And you can be bound by technology. You can be bound by budget. There's lots of reasons why. But the bottom line is, regardless of what your, I'll throw some more TLAs out there, regardless of your RPO or your RTO, SLA, and regardless of how much you've invested for TCO and BIA and RA and all the other al alphabet soup that you could put in, the bottom line is what the IT is not, the, the business believes that IT is not able to deliver on whatever that negotiated SLA is in four out of five scenarios, right? You know, whatever your service level agreement is, daily, hourly, weekly, whatever, the buyer, the exec, still says IT is not meeting that about 80% of the time. I will offer, by the way, um, a pro tip on how you do research. Now, um, Dave and I each have a little better than 30 years each in the data protection space. Each of us spent better than a decade as an analyst uh, uh, doing this kind of research before we joined Veeam to help um, in the office of CTO. One of the pro tips when you do this kind of research is you start with questions like, just tell me about your environment. Right. And we talked about that physical, virtual cloud, just unbiased. Just tell me what you're thinking. Right. And then you test some how you feeling overall. Right. Top line sentiment and perception. And then you start to go into. So what are you doing about? What are you thinking here? And then belong, along the way, you finally get to the point where you say, OK, so what features matter in this conversation or what things are the most problematic? But there is a, a mental journey that you take a, a respondent through to really get the best answers. And so this is a perception question up front with no bias and no other. Tell me about your RPO and your RTO and your last downtime and business impact. We're not asking that yet. Just how do you think it's going? And four out of five say it should be doing better than it is. I think that's a pretty damning statement um, as we enter into 2023. Yeah, I, what I would leave everyone with is that when we unpack the rest of this research, whether your organization falls into these averages or not, the chances are that you're somewhere off of what you would like to be, where you would like to be able to say you're be able to deliver to the business, or you just flat out know that you've got some drift in your ability to, to meet the objectives that you've been charged with. The good news is you're not alone. The other news is we can help give you more information, maybe even strengthen your case, bolter the claim about why we have to go address this yep. so that you can do that proactively instead of finding out after the fact. So as we begin to wind down, Jason, we've published a lot of research now in the last few weeks this one in particular, the Data Protection Trends Report, largest ever in the history of this space. You see the QR code there, urlbe.am forward slash dpr23. I encourage you to check it out. We've done additional research, though, as well. Yeah, so uh, so we're getting into a pattern where almost every quarter we're producing some kind of research where we go out to uh, different research firms and say, hey, you have expertise in these areas. Can you go and ask several hundred or thousand uh, folks on the responses? You see the data protection trends research in the lower right hand corner, um, probably our second most a uh, popular report um, that we published just back in May of this year was the ransomware trends report. So that report actually surveyed a thousand organization that had been successfully attacked um, and impacted by one or more ransom events in the preceding 12 months. Uh, so encourage you to check that one out. That's the QR code over here and or the the end of the URL is RW22 for that one. Um, this was our first year to deliver a Salesforce uh, product from Veeam. And so 
as we as we often do, we want to go and talk to Salesforce admins. What were they trying to solve for, and where does Salesforce protection fit within overall IT uh, rationale, strategies, and priorities? And so again, this research fuels our roadmap um, of products and features as well. So take a look at that one uh, that debuted at Salesforce last year. Uh, just before the year wrapped up, we also did one on cloud protection trends. We've talked a lot today, Dave about uh, how much is cloud hosted. This is 1,700 respondents, all of which were either IaaS admins, SaaS admins, PaaS admins, or backup admins to understand, do those four personas agree with how these new cloud hosted workloads should be protected and how? Yep, absolutely. So what we'd like to do is just tease up what we're gonna do next week, January 24th, same day, Tuesday, same time. We'll have episode 112 where we're going to double click on what does enterprise backup really mean to 4,200 global respondents? Jason, I won't give too much away, but I will say I think the answers now of what enterprise is perceived as enterprise backup specifically may be surprising. Yeah, you know, in the past, enterprise always meant, um, you know, was it was it, it had to be scale and had to touch every platform, and you know, there was so much complexity, and there's a, there's a lot of things that it could mean, um, and that definition, like most other definitions, has shifted over the last three decades that we have been in this space. It'll be fun to unveil the most recent results of that. Tune in this time next week. Thanks everyone for joining us. I encourage you to download all of the research, but especially this data protection trends 2023 version. Stay safe, stay positive, and we'll see you on the next live stream.